Hey guys, it's Charles Jaeger with Jaeger Film. In this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you a trick that I call the poor man's color matcher. And it's just using the native effects and after effects, how you can color match a composite you're adding into your scene. Now before I show you that, I do want to mention the plugin from Red Giant called Color Matcher. And it's a really nice plugin. I do want to apply that to this shot here just so you can kind of see what that is. But again, what we're going to be doing doesn't require Color Matcher. We're going to be doing an alternative to that. But let me just go ahead and demo Color Matcher from Red Giant. So I've got these barrels in here in this shot and they're just rendered out on an alpha channel. And let's say I'm wanting to composite those so they look more realistic in this scene. So what I would do is I would select my image of my barrels here, come up here to Effect. And then under the Key Correct Suite here, we have Color Matcher right here. And what this plugin is going to allow me to do is select my target background layer. So I'm just going to select that footage back there. And then you'll see how that kind of changed the color that's being applied to the barrels. It's essentially pulling color from this background and applying it so that it just looks more realistic and kind of matches the composite here. And I can adjust the strength of that. You can see and just kind of blend the two together. But with the Color Matcher plugin, you have a few other options over here. But again, I want to show you an alternative trick that I use quite often that's just using the tint effect here in After Effects. And it's really quite effective. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that Color Matcher effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply the tint effect. So I'm going to come here to Effect, and then Color Correction, and Tint. And immediately it's going to make your image, whatever you're compositing here, completely black and white. So what I want to do is on Amount to Tint, this is kind of like our strength. I'm just going to pull this all the way down to zero. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to right click here and I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to move that adjustment layer underneath the barrels here, whatever image I'm compositing in. This is just going to be temporary. And so what we're going to do is we're going to apply a Gaussian Blur to this adjustment layer. So I'm just going to go over to the Effects and Presets and type in Gaussian Blur and apply that to that adjustment layer. And the idea here is we really want to blur out the background so that all these colors kind of blend together so we can get a nice color average. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the blurriness and you can see the background colors are kind of meshing together. And I'm going to check on this repeat edge pixels just so we don't see that around the edges there. So I'm going to select back on my barrels image. And for the map black 2, so this is a darker color, what I want to do is select that color picker and then just select a darker color in this scene. So we can see we have these dark browns kind of up here in the forest. So I'll just select one of these up here. And then for the map white 2, I want to select a lighter color. So I'm going to select that color picker and I'm going to select this kind of brighter clay down here at the base of the ground. So now we have both of those colors selected. I'm going to go ahead and delete that adjustment layer because we don't need that anymore. And so the idea here is we're essentially going to apply these two colors to our image to kind of match that color atmosphere for our scene. And it's pretty effective, so I'll go ahead and increase this up a little bit here. You can kind of see what it's doing, and you can see how it's kind of emulating what we saw with the color matcher effect. So usually somewhere around 10 to 30% looks pretty good on whatever you're compositing. You don't want to bring it all the way up because then it'll start to look kind of weird. But I'm going to set this around 30% there, what I had it on. And if I go ahead and check it on and off, you can see what a difference it actually makes to kind of help blend that with the shot and kind of help match the color atmosphere of your composite. But you can actually use this in a few other ways. I've got a few other comps here I want to demonstrate this effect on. So I've got a shot here, and this is of a forest, and there's a lot of smoke. There's like a big fire burning, a controlled burn. So it's creating all this smoke here uh, in the atmosphere, and you can use the same effect to kind of emulate that smoke on something else you're compositing in. So what I've got here is an Element 3D X-Wing layer here. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the tint effect to that. And so with something like this in the sky, I don't really want to pull any dark colors. I just want to pull the smoke color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the amount to tint here all the way to zero. And for the map black too, I'm just going to use the color picker and select the smoke. And I'm going to do the same thing with the map white too. Just selecting that smoke color. And you can see as I increase this, it's going to kind of emulate like this X-Wing is further in the distance. So I'll just continue to bring that up. And you can see how it kind of adds that smoke layer atop the X-Wing. So again, kind of matching that composite. And you can adjust that for how dense you want the smoke to be. So that's a pretty cool and effective way you can use it for something like that. It also works with the sky. So let's jump over to this other composition. And here's another use case where you want to kind of demonstrate something further in the distance. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this closer eagle here. And you can see I went ahead and selected already the two colors of the sky for this. I'll just increase this a little bit. Just kind of imitate that it's in the sky. And that one that's further away, obviously it would be more faded. So I'm just going to select it. And I'll just increase the amount of tint a little bit further. And again, that'll kind of give it the look that it's further off in the distance. It's further away than this eagle that's closer. So that's another trick you can do with that, kind of emulating the same lines if you want to show something really far off into the distance. And on our final shot here, what I've got, I've got a tree here. And I've got the tint effect applied to it. And I'll just come down here and I'm going to turn back on a blur layer and select a dark color. And then I'll select a light color here. I'll probably select the sky on this one. Go ahead and turn that back off. 
and I'll select the tree here, and I'm just gonna increase that amount to 10. Now, sometimes when you do this, you can see as I increase this, your object that you're compositing in might start to look a little faded, like overall, again, because we're mapping these two colors on top of our element. What you can do to bring a little more contrast back into this, I'm just gonna apply a curves effect to this. And place that on there. And I'll just pull the contrast down a little bit and you can bring a little more contrast back into your image. Uh, that way it doesn't get too faded, but it'll still kind of match the composite you can see of your scene. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoy this quick compositing tip in the poor man's color matcher. This has been Charles Jaeger with Jaeger Film. Thanks for watching.